So I want to combine these two things, an idea of social structure, an idea of the individual into a single conceptualization. And this single conceptualization will be a foundation upon which I build many of our subsequent lectures. So this is sort of one of the more important um, uh, parts of, of sociology. And I'm just gonna say it's a very, very simple idea, but actually gets more complicated the more you think about it and has profound implications. So in the very first lecture, I introduced you to the idea of the sociological imagination. And in it, I said, sociological imagination comes from C. Wright Mills. Um, in the book, he entitled The Sociological Imagination. And Mills described the sociological imagination as the combination of biography and history, or the ways in which our personal stories interact with social structures in order to generate an account of the world. And the sociological imagination, in this sense, refers to the complex interconnection between agency and social structure about how our actions, both large and small, shape the world in which we live, and at the same time that the social world shapes the actions that we take. So it's important to understand the two sides of this relationship, the extent to which we shape the social world and the extent to which we are shaped by it. If we hope to fully understand and hopefully, you know, um, kind of Come, with, come up with a scientific understanding of how people behave in the way that they do. There is a constant interaction between structure and agency. Between agency, which is the ability to act within one's own will, and social structure, the resources that we can tap into, as well as the rules that we need to navigate when we act. I'll say that again. There is a constant interaction between agency, the ability to act on one's own will, and social structure, the resources we can tap into, as well as the rules that we need to navigate. Where I'd like us to really end up is to think about this deep interplay between agency and structure, between the ways in which our actions and identities help reproduce social structures, and that those social structures, which are rules, resources, statuses, roles, group dynamics, and networks and institutions produce us as individuals. And in this sense, I say it's like super simple, but it's also um, 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 not as simple maybe as it first uh, seems. We are made by the world is the basic idea here. So we are made by the world, but in our everyday actions, we remake that world. What this allows for is a conceptualization of how it is that there are deep patterns to social life because we are all made by the same structures, but agency has this freedom to it, this certain flexibility to it that allows us to subtly change social structures over time. As individuals, we make reflexive choices about how to act. And those choices are informed by our recognition of rules and resources, by normative expectations and the resources that we have. The social structure itself only exists because of the actions of individuals, and the actions of individuals are influenced by social structure. We are born into a world of social structure that is infused with history that is deeply infused with the history of people's previous actions. Here in the United States, we are born into a social structure of race. And that social structure of race is infused with the history of slavery. That history of slavery is not something that I did or anyone listening did, but it is something that has a deep consequence for the overall structure of our society. If you think about the country that you're from, there are going to be elements of the history of that country that are enormously important, whether or not there was a revolution, whether or not there was some fight for independence, whether or not you know, there was ever an aristocracy of a, or a kingdom or a king or an emperor or a ruler of some kind, that history is built into the social structure. And people did that. They like physically, personally, through their agency, produced that. 
but there are sort of these legacies of those things through structures. So the sets of structures that we inherit when we're born into a society then mean that there are consequences to those actions. And those consequences will influence us. In my instance of the example of being from the United States and thinking about race, the legacies of slavery create a series of structural conditions that influence my actions and other people's actions. And we slowly but surely can transform it. Agency is possible within it. We do not relive the same society every day, every year, every generation, or every century, right? We actually transform it fundamentally through our actions. In the instance of slavery, the fact of the Civil War matters, right? The fact that slavery ended was actions that people took in order to transform those social structural conditions. And so when we analyze a society, we need to think about how we both make and are made by the world. And that we are made by the world and that that making influences what it is that we do and that that doing influences the world itself. And this constant circular movement of structures producing agency and agency resulting in actions that reproduce and slightly transform structures is essential to understanding any society. So should we study the social structure or the individual? The answer from a sociological perspective is you have to do both. You cannot understand the actions that people undertake without similarly understanding the social structures that make those actions sensible, but that those social structures do not determine the actions that we take. We have the capacity to be creative. We have the capacity to slightly transform things. We may or may not be successful, but insofar as we do, the rules, resources, statuses, and um, uh, groups and networks and institutions change over time. We can see this radically in moments of revolution where rules are changed profoundly. Um, or, and we can see this on sort of smaller scales where there's sort of a conversation about how things maybe could be a little bit different. And let's see if we can change things just a little bit and you might have gradual social transformations. The mutual influence of structure and agency create our ever-changing individual and social lives. So it changes how we think about ourselves and the worlds that we find ourselves born into. Let me just quickly give an example of this. Um, and um, I think I hope it will be useful to, to, to think with. Um, one of major social changes that's happened in some areas of the world um, um, has been a set of changes around uh, marriage rules. And in particular, whether or not um, uh, same-sex or same-gender partners are allowed to be married to one another. And, you know, this is something that is, you know, particularly in the United States and Europe, but in many places now throughout the world, been a profound social transformation. I mean, just absolutely huge in terms of both how it is that people think about themselves and what kinds of opportunities or resources are available to people. And, how did this happen? How was it the case that you saw this social transformation? Well, you know, the full history of this has yet to be written, um, but it almost certainly begins with individual acts of protest, where individuals engage in some form of disruption to say the sets of rules, resources, and statuses that we have are not legitimate, and we are going to challenge them. So in the United States, this um, began in part with what was called the Stonewall Riots. And there was a bar called the Stonewall Inn that the police consistently raided and arrested people from, at, people who identified as gay, lesbian, and transgender, and queer. And at some point in time, the people in the neighborhood who were experiencing this constant raiding, which was legal because of the rules and regulations of the society, revolted. They protested in the streets. They um, basically shut down the neighborhood. They kicked out the cops. And they said, this is not acceptable anymore. Now, it took decades for the transformation 
towards marriage equality to fully happen, and we might even question the effectiveness of marriage equality for the broader transformation. But it's important to note that there were a set of rules and resources and statuses that were ascribed to people, people as homosexual or queer, that produced sensibilities and forms of action, both on, on the part of the police and on part of the community that you refused to accept the police repression and violence against that community. There were then actions that people took in order to redefine the rules, to redefine the resources and redefine the statuses. And that was more or less successful. We have way more examples of failed rather than successful transformations. That is large scale social structural transformations don't, like most of the time they don't happen things tend to get reproduced to a pretty high degree. But even if you think for a moment about, you know, talk to older people in your life, be that parents or teachers or older siblings or friends of yours who are a generation older, you might ask them, like, what are the social structural conditions that you grew up in? What were the rules, resources, statuses? What were the roles that people played? What were the acceptable groups? And how are they different now? And you might ask, like, what were the actions that you took or that other people took that produced that difference? Here, then, we can begin to think about society as this constant production of individual agents and individual agents' capacity for creativity in order to transform social conditions. This makes me think that a logic of progress is kind of a misguided idea because what society is, is either a logic of reproduction or a logic of change. And this is where we're gonna end. Marx is at his core, a theorist of revolution and of conflict where he basically argues that the social structure produces a set of conflict and contradictions that eventually will result in agency, in the action of people to overthrow the system. So capitalism is going to produce a particular kind of agency within the proletariat who at some point in time are going to have to take actions in order to transform the system. Marx, in this sense, in, is being a theorist of crisis, a theorist of transformation, and a theorist of conflict. And so one way to look at this picture here about the interrelationship between agency and social structure is to think about change. Another way to look at it is to think about reproduction. Not it, how it is that things change through crisis, conflict, and action but instead how they stay the same because social structures tend to reproduce the same kinds of agents. And those agents have social tendencies of action that reproduce the same kinds of social structure. Both a theory of change and a theory of reproduction fit within this model. Both of them sort of can be made sense of depending upon what parts of this you're interested in. And this is how sociology is both a theory of how things change and a theory of how things stay the same. It's the same model that explains both change and reproduction. Reproduction happens because structures produce similar kinds of agents who produce similar kinds of actions that reproduce the structures. Change happens because structures produce particular kinds of agents who seek to change those structures and who through their, through their actions attempt to transform them and thereby do transform those structures, which generate new kinds of agents, which generate new kinds of actions, which generate new kinds of structures, new kinds of agents. It is an emphasis here. So there are no, you, when you think about reproduction versus change within sociology, it's not a competing model. It's the same model for both reproduction and for change with either different emphases on different parts of this process or different empirical cases 
that we study in order to say, ah, what's happening here is clearly an instance of change or clearly an instance of social reproduction. So with this in mind, we now have a kind of model of social structure and the individual. And we see the ways in which social structures produce our actions and how our actions are deeply influenced by social structure and help reproduce or maybe transform those structures. This will be our general model of sociology that we're going to build upon again and again and again. We'll show how gender is something that is a structural set of conditions that produces the ways in which we act, but that our actions transform our understandings of gender. We'll see how race is a set of structural conditions that produces our identities and that our identities as racialized identities have some flexibility where we transform the structure of race. We'll see this with class. We'll see this again and again and again. So this model will be something that we basically rest a lot of the foundation of sociology 